Hey everyone, Ryan from E-Bike Escape, and in this video we're going to be reviewing the brand new Juiced Rip Racer, their most affordable electric bike yet, so let's get into it. So I have been wanting to review a Juiced electric bike for some time. I've actually been recommending Juiced electric bikes for now a couple of years. So super excited to share this Juiced Rip Racer review with you. So do me a favor, if you are looking to purchase any of their models, check out the link in the description. Use that before you make your purchase. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel. And it lets Juice know that I sent you their way. So really appreciate your support. I also put links to our electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page. With that, let's get into the walk around of this awesome electric bike. And you'll note that this is the high-vis yellow color. It actually comes in some pretty unique colors. I, of course, chose the high-vis. I just think it's super unique. I always like to go with the more unique colors. And I would say it doesn't quite match my Showers Pass coat. This is more of a high-vis green, if you will. So I've definitely been visible out on the road with this bike. And one of the very attractive things, in my opinion, about this bike one, the price. So the version you see here, this is the class three version, priced at $15.99. They also have a class two version, that's gonna be the 20 mile per hour top speed, priced at $13.99. So it's very much their most affordable electric bike. They also have fat tire bikes, they have more city bikes, and of course, what they're really known for is their more moped style electric bikes. Now I feel like with this frame, it kind of meshes two different worlds, right? The moped style bikes where you're perhaps not pedaling, but what is unique about this bike is you still have a traditional seat. So if you want to lower that and ride it more like a moped style electric bike, you can do so. And I really like this mid-step design and smaller frame. It's going to be very comfortable for people who are shorter to ride this electric bike. And as you're watching the third person riding footage towards the end of this video, just be aware that that seat post is in its highest position. I'm six feet tall, so hopefully that'll give you a little bit better idea of sizing. All right, let's start up here in the front of the bike. So we have 180 millimeter rotors here, and then we have Logan hydraulic disc brakes. Again, not necessarily something you see at this price point at $1,600. Some brands will still have mechanical disc brakes, so really like that they went with hydraulic. This is not a brand that I'm familiar with, but I was very impressed when I took this out and rode it, especially at class three speeds. You definitely want more stopping power. We do have a nutted axle, so no quick release. So if you wanted to be able to change a flat, perhaps while you're out on the road, you will want to make sure you bring a wrench with you. For tires, we have CST 20 by four inch tires, true fat tires, and these have some tread on them. So if you wanted to take it off road, you can. Just be aware that you do have a rigid fork here. So no suspension, but the thing is with fat tires, you can go ahead and lower the pressure. I certainly would do that if I'm going to be taking this bike off road. Adds a little bit more cushion to your ride. Now I do get the question a lot on just generally electric bikes that don't have front suspension that are still fat tires. It's really personal preference. In my opinion, riding this around the city, I personally did not miss having a front suspension, though I might add a suspension seat post. That's of course going to add some additional comfort. And in my opinion, with suspensions, of course they're always nice to have, but if a company isn't going to put on one that's high quality it really isn't worth it because it just adds additional weight all right let's move on to the front light one thing that i think that juice is doing is they're not really using off the shelf parts this is a front light that i haven't seen before i think it is specific to juiced and it is a thousand lumen light and that's just simply not something you see on many electric bikes usually they add some visibility but they're not quite as bright as this one so really appreciate that. 
Juice definitely pays attention to some of the details around all of their electric bikes. And if you watch their YouTube channel, you can see Tora, the CEO, going to China and working with the factory. They also make sure that their bikes arrive to you in great condition. You can watch my unboxing if you want, but I've seen videos of them in a warehouse slamming the boxes on the ground as they're testing the packaging. So again, just something that I think is very unique about Juiced, and it's cool that they share some of that stuff on their YouTube channel. As we see on many electric bikes, we have mounting points here at the head tube for a front rack slash basket. Now what they decided to do is they kind of have this additional plate on here just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Definitely appreciate that. And of course that's the Juiced logo. And just pointing out another one of the aesthetics here, we have the Juiced shield, I guess, here on the stem plate. One of the things I like to call out with the electric bikes I review is the cable management. You can see they have a little bit here on each side, but if you wanted to, you could certainly buy some cable wrap off Amazon and make this look much cleaner. And we have RR for Rip Racer here on these BMX style handlebars, just a nice touch. All right, let's move on to the cockpit. So we have these rubber grips. They aren't locking, but they're pretty comfortable. They have a nice palm rest. And I already talked about those Logan brakes, hydraulic brakes. These levers feel really nice as hydraulic brakes should. And they do have the motor cutoffs, of course. That's an important safety feature. So I'll be curious to see if I see these brakes on more electric bikes, but definitely a fan of them. Before we get to the display, let's just move on to the right side. Really like the right hand twist grip throttle. That's what I prefer compared to the left hand thumb throttles. And then they do include a bell here as well. Now the Juice Rip Racer has this minimalist display over here on the left side. And what that does is it makes room up here on the BMX style handlebars for additional accessories, maybe a removable, rechargeable light, cell phone mount, those sort of things. But let's go ahead and dig into this LCD. I'll go ahead and turn it off. The power button is located on the top here. And again, I believe this display is unique to Juiced. I'm not sure if any other brand is using this display. And it actually is pretty easy to see in the daylight as far as text goes, but the screen is a little bit small, something just to be aware of. Now you can see on the top left, we have 52.4 volts. So they're actually sharing the voltage and then you have the battery meter in the top right hand corner. And we do have the current speed as well, front and center. And we have the pedal assist modes here. You can start in zero, obviously no pedal assist though you do get access to the throttle when it is in pedal assist zero. And then you have eco, one, two, three, speed. And then if you go into the advanced settings, which I'll show you here in a little bit, and actually I go through and show you how to unlock this to get into race mode, that's gonna be the R, unlocking the full power again of this class three electric bike. This is the class three version. And then in the bottom middle, you have the current wattage that the motor is using. So if I hit the throttle, that'll increase the current watts. And then you do have an odometer in the bottom right hand corner. Now there's two kind of additional screens you can get to. One, if you hold the power button and the pedal assist button at the same time, you get into this additional information chart here. We'll flash on the screen what all these numbers mean, but on the left side, you have the voltage, again, the watts, and then it displays the current amps. And it also is giving you the watt hours per mile. So you can go into this screen if you want a little bit more information. And on the right side here, you actually have the information of how many watt hours and amp hours that you used in the trip. And then you can go ahead and clear these out. And then you do have a reading in Celsius for the current controller temperature. And one thing you have with this bike is also walk mode. So if I hold down the pedal assist down button, you'll see that the person appears and it's now in walk mode if you need that. Now I believe if I hold the power and pedal assist down button, it's going to clear out the settings here. 
There we go, everything is cleared out so you can track your trip. Now that we're back at the main screen, I wanted to show you how to turn the lights on. Simply hold the pedal assist up button and there is a little light indicator there. All right, and then the advanced settings, the other advanced settings where you can actually make changes, hold the pedal assist up and down button at the same time. And that's going to get you into this screen, unit, speed limit, backlight, wheel size, power off delay, NDW, I actually go through that later. That's actually how you add the speed mode. Again, please follow your local laws and regulations. Torque, that's only if you're riding a juiced bike that has the torque and cadence sensor. This one simply has just the cadence sensor, so you don't wanna touch that. And then you also have low volts, and I believe that allows you to be able to set it so the bike turns off at a current low voltage number. And below low volts, we have odometer set and backlight state, as well as light. And I'll just cycle through these so you can see them on the display. So first is unit, obviously miles per hour kilometers. Then we have the top speed, backlight, I actually have that turned all the way up to eight. Wheel size, you won't wanna to touch that. It's at 1850, so power off delay, NDW, I show that later. Overriding this into race mode, torque is default to on, low volts, odometer set, always on, light is set to switch, you can change it to always on, and that's it. All right, let's move on to some of the other design aesthetics here. A rip racer on the top of the top tube, and we also have some design elements here, as well as on the other side of the chain stay. And of course, juiced written down on the down tube. Now you might be wondering what these four holes are for, and this is actually so you can place a bottle cage pretty much anywhere, but I believe Juiced is developing a new custom frame bag that would fit here if you want to. Of course, just keep in mind that is going to be a little bit more difficult to get your feet over. So if you're buying this because it's super accessible, just keep that in mind. And I would probably put the bottle cage maybe closer to the top here and maybe you can squeeze your leg towards the bottom here. But wherever you wanna put it, you can put your bottle cage or maybe even a foldable lock. Let's move on to the battery pack. This is a massive 52 volt, 15.6 amp hour battery. Now, in previous years, I would say the 52 volt systems are super unique to Juiced. There's a few more companies now that are doing it, but I believe all of the Juice bikes are using 52 volt batteries. So that is something to keep in mind if you're comparing this to other electric bikes. And with this next generation pack, they actually have like a charging dock. Perhaps if you're using these bikes as rentals, you could just drop the battery in and they can charge up. So just something unique that Juiced is doing. We do have the charger port over here on the left side, comes with a two amp charger. And I'll go ahead and take the battery off so you can see how that works. They do give you three keys. And it comes off at an angle here. Again, 52 volt, 15.6 amp hour battery. Really like that it has a handle. Definitely a little bit easier to carry this inside. And as I mentioned, so this is where it actually connects to the bike to give it power. But then, as I mentioned, they kind of have those drop-in chargers that they're developing, and this is where it would connect to charge. So something that's pretty cool. Now, one unique thing that I really like is you can see they have this battery bar here. So when this battery is charging, those actually light up and tell you how far along you are charging up the battery. Not something that I've seen before, and I really like that. So you can get an idea of just how full your battery is when you're charging it. A lot of bikes, when you're charging the battery, you just have to wait till you see that it goes green when it's done. So nice job juiced on that. And you'll notice here at the front of the battery, there's actually a compartment here and that allows you to put an air tag in here for additional security. We'll put a screenshot of just how that looks so you can get an idea. That's something again that I feel like it's just juiced taking a little bit more effort into developing their electric bikes and adding some cool features. I've actually seen on the Facebook groups, lots of people using AirTags. Of course you can put them somewhere else, but 
having a compartment right here on the battery is really nice. Now, something to keep in mind with this battery is you'll notice there's a power button here and you need to make sure that is turned on, otherwise the bike won't turn on. Now, the reason they did this is for a security feature so someone can't just steal your bike and ride off with it. So you can actually turn this off and then lock it on the bike and the bike won't turn on. It actually took me a while in my unboxing to realize that that button was kind of hidden there. So it is a security feature, something to get used to with this electric bike and just something to be aware of. I think for security, it does make a lot of sense. All right, we'll go ahead and put the battery back, put it in the corner first. And I've taken this battery out on and off a few times. Just something that I would check is just pulling on it a little bit just to make sure that it is indeed locked on there because there was one time when I noticed it was still loose. So you wanna make sure that your battery is secure. All right, let's talk about the saddle. A Juiced branded saddle with this rear plastic handle. Probably not the most comfortable saddle, but it does really fit the design aesthetics of this bike. But if you want something more comfortable, check out our electric bike accessories list. Let's move on to the pedals. Metal pedals here, very similar to what I see on many electric bikes. There are some reflectors. Though in my opinion, if you're getting an electric bike that looks as cool as this, you might wanna upgrade the pedals. Get something that adds some color, some flair to your electric bike, and it's just a fun way to customize it. So many of the Juiced electric bikes are cadence and torque sensor. Just wanted to point out the cadence sensor here. And that's something to be aware of if you're looking at their other models. Perhaps you want a bike with a torque sensor. And of course the pedals are located out of the way of the kickstand. So no chance of hitting it when you're moving the bike around. Nice rear mounted kickstand here, plenty sturdy. And we do have the motor cable with this disconnect entering on the left side of the bike here. There's those Logan hydraulic disc brakes in the rear and the cable management. And speaking of cable management, I just wanted to talk about the juiced cable management underneath here. And what they have is this removable piece. So if you ever need to do any maintenance here, it's actually gonna be pretty easy for you to access these cables. I think that's a really nice addition, just thinking of being able to repair this electric bike. And you can see the cables come underneath the frame and down here. And I also wanted to point out the controller location, which is mounted behind the seat tube here. And so you can remove this if you ever needed to get access to the controller, so that's really nice. All right, moving back to the rear of the bike here, you can see we have a torque arm, always nice to see that. And they have these burly threads here for the rear rack. So these are thicker than I see on many electric bikes, so they come with some bigger bolts. And I also wanted to share that you can buy fenders for this electric bike as well. It does not come with fenders. All right, let's talk about the rear light. Now it does operate as a brake light when the lights aren't turned on. So I'm just hitting the brake here and hopefully you can see that it is going on. And then of course, when I hold the pedal assist up button, it'll turn the light on and then it will go slightly brighter when I hit the brakes. Definitely a cool looking rear light, though it's not going to add a ton of visibility during the day. So you might wanna add a seat post mounted one as well, but it does look pretty nice at night. All right, let's move on to the other side of the bike. So 750 watt motor that peaks at 1300 watts on the class three version and the class two version peaks at 1000 watts. Now this bike is a single speed. So we have 12 teeth here in the rear and a 52 tooth front chain ring. I talk about the gearing a little bit more in my first person riding footage. And we have a chain tensioner here to keep tension on the chain and a clear plastic tape here to protect the chain stay. All right, with that, let's get into some first person riding footage and we'll see what the Juice Rip Racer can do on throttle alone, as well as going through the various pedal assist modes. And then of course, we'll get to our hill climb test. All right, first person riding footage on the Juiced Rip Racer. I know I'm going to get tons of comments if I don't do it, so we're gonna go ahead and change this top speed of this electric bike and also unlock race mode. I'll show you how to do that here. Hold the plus and minus pedal assist button 
And as always, be sure to follow all your local laws and regulations. Now I'm going to scroll down to speed limit here. Now this is a class three electric bike. So you can go to 28 miles per hour or even lower if you wanted to have someone who's maybe not comfortable riding an electric bike go a little bit slower. We're gonna go ahead and max this out. I know it's not gonna go over 50 miles an hour. 62. All right, and then I'm gonna go back into the advanced settings and scroll down to NDW. Now this is the number of pedal assist modes. So as it comes shipped, you have one, two, three, and then S for speed. And if I change this to five, that's going to give me race mode. And get out of the settings here. And I was mistaken, you actually have zero, eco, one, two, three, speed, and then of course race mode. The R was what wasn't available before. And as I do with all the first person riding footage on the electric bikes that I review, I will start in throttle only. We have the speedometer app by Coolnix. Hopefully you can see that on my screen and I will try to read it off as well. Now the top speed on this bike should be 20 miles per hour. Of course, that makes it class two designation. And then while pedaling, I should be able to hit 28 miles per hour and with race mode and the top speed overridden, I should be able to hit even more. Okay, here we go. Throttle only, three, two, one, go. Definitely a lot of pickup with this throttle. 14, 16, and there's 20 miles per hour. Again, as expected, it is holding me there. I'm going to make you guys wait a little bit till I get into speed mode. Let's start a little bit lower. Of course, we have a single speed drivetrain here and I did lower the seat a little bit, so I'm not in optimal pedaling position. But I think this bike lends itself to more of a lower seat height, just cruising around the city. And of course, you have tons of power as well. All right, I am currently in pedal assist zero, so no power. And the way they have this bike geared, definitely a workout to keep this bike going. So in my opinion, you would not wanna run out of battery on this. Now, I have a feeling when we get into those higher speeds, I'm really gonna be appreciating the gearing that they went with with this bike, but pedaling it with no power is a bit of a challenge. I don't know if you can see my legs moving, but they're moving very slowly and we're only going about eight miles per hour. And hills are gonna be almost impossible. All right, let's go into eco mode here. Nice ease on the throttle, really like that. And again, still feeling plenty of resistance with that front chain ring, but I am also going 16 miles an hour. All right, let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level one was just an eco. And again, I feel the motor kick on a little bit more there as well, hitting that 20 miles an hour. Pretty leisurely cadence, I would say. There's 22 miles an hour in pedal assist level one only. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist two. And now we're hitting 23 miles an hour. Legs are starting to spin a little bit more as expected. 24 miles an hour. Oh, I can't, I can't imagine what race mode is going to be. All right, pedal assist uh, three now. There's 27 miles an hour. Wow. 28 miles an hour. And my legs are definitely starting to spin a lot. Till I'm on a straightaway, but I'm gonna hang out here and pedal assist three here. A straightaway without bumps, I should say. Yeah, still able to provide some power of my own, even at 26 miles an hour. That can't be said, a lot of electric bikes when you hit even 20 miles an hour sometimes, you're just really spinning those pedals. So I think that was a very intentional choice by them. All right, let's go ahead and go into speed mode here. And it is pretty windy today. This 
display showing 27, 28 miles per hour on my screen. All right, race mode, here we go. speed. All right, with that, let's see what this motor can do up the large hill climb test. Okay, here we are at the hill climb test, the hill I test out all of the electric bikes that I review. We'll put on the screen a picture of the hill because it looks so much smaller on the GoPro as well as the specs of the hill. First test will be throttle only and I will note as I was riding over here, I did see 29 miles per hour on the display. So I think that was the top speed. So we're gonna hit that 20 miles per hour and then we'll see what this bike can do. And uh, then I'll go back down and go up the hill while pedaling. Obviously that will be uh, something that a lot of people will wanna consider because it is a single speed. But I think this motor is plenty powerful. All right, it says I'm using uh, 800 watts right now. 900, 1,000 watts. Going about 16, still at 1,000 watts, just over 1,000 watts here. 14 per second. Pretty impressive, given the price point of this bike, in my opinion. So I think 14 is gonna be the minimum speed. I'm gonna start on the hill to see what this thing can do. Yeah, so even at a standstill, bike has plenty of power. All right, now I'm gonna go back down the hill and we'll see what this bike can do while pedaling. All right, here we go, hill climb test while pedaling. We'll actually start in Eco. Give myself a little bit of throttle just to get going. And I can't imagine a lot of people buying this are gonna be riding an Eco unless they really need to conserve battery. And of course on hills, I mean, my legs are slowly moving with the higher gearing. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level one. Again, definitely going to want to go higher than this. There's pedal assist level two. And going about 10, let's go ahead and go into pedal assist three, 12 miles an hour. And what I think is gonna be really interesting is seeing what it does in the even higher pedal assist. There's speed going 14 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, using 900, 1000 watts. And let's go ahead, going 16 miles an hour, which is very impressive. And again, because this is a cadence sensor, I can just keep my legs spinning nice and easy. Let's go ahead and go into race mode there. And I do see the wattage going up here, 1200 watts, uh, maybe even close to 1300 watts. And so I think that's what is what race mode 
is kind of unlocking. So. All right, next I wanted to demonstrate cruise control, something that you don't see very often. I have seen cruise control before, but it's not a feature that I see frequently. So we're gonna test it out here on the Rip Racer. And I just wanna note, while I was coming down that hill, looks like I hit 34 miles per hour and these brakes, hydraulic brakes, performed very well. And I also want to call out when I was riding in race mode, I did see the 11, 1200-ish, maybe even a little bit more uh, watts coming out of race mode. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna hit the throttle a little bit here just to get going. And if I hold the pedal assist down button, then I get a little C on the top left-hand corner of the screen. And whatever speed I was holding the bike at, which it looks like was around eight miles an hour here, not eight or nine miles an hour, it's going to hold me at that until I hit the throttle or hit the brakes. And what is cool is I can pedal and I'll go faster, but then if I stop pedaling, for instance, again, not using the brakes, but then get down to that eight, nine miles per hour, the cruise control is going to kick back in. So really cool feature if you kind of want to maintain uh, a certain speed. So wanted to share that with you. All right, with that, let's get to the third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Juiced Rip Racer. A lot of you have been asking for this review and I'm happy to report that the Juice Rip Racer is a ton of fun. I've been admiring Juice for some time now and it's pretty clear to me that they are doing things a little bit different. These aren't off the shelf components on an e-bike slapped with a Juice logo. Their CEO, Tora, is in the weeds making sure they deliver a quality electric bike and it shows not just with the Rip Racer, but throughout the lineup. The Rip Racer is the most affordable e-bike from the brand. It's self-described as a fun-sized fat tire e-bike, and I think that sums it up well. I like that the mid-step frame is accessible to shorter riders, and it's not quite as intimidating as some full-sized fat tire e-bikes. The bike has a BMX feel to it, which lends itself to lowering the seat and kicking back and enjoying the ride, but what's nice is you can raise the seat to get into a more comfortable riding position if you prefer. Just note that taller riders than me at six feet tall might not be able to get full leg extension. Note that the bike weighs 66 pounds with the battery installed and 55 pounds without. For the price of $15.99, the bike is well specced when you consider the 52 volt system with a larger than average battery. Juice states a range of 23 miles up to 80 miles with the 52 volt 15.6 amp hour battery. Here's a look at their range chart on how they get to those range estimates. And of course, the powerful motor that peaks close to 1300 watts is another highlight of this e-bike, as well as the nice hydraulic disc brakes. There simply aren't a lot of class three e-bikes in this price range. I should touch also on the class two model priced at 1399. It tops out at 20 miles per hour, has a much more simple display, the battery is only 10.4 amp hours, and the motor peaks at around 1000 watts with a 20 amp controller compared to a 25 amp controller on the class three version. In my opinion, it's well worth springing the extra $200 for the class three version, especially if you plan to ride a lot. And just a side note, Juiced has hinted at an off-road controller, which would allow for speeds well into the 20s on throttle alone. Now there are some things those considering this e-bike need to think about. While I found the gearing to be appropriate, especially considering how they're marketing this e-bike, there's no getting around the fact that it's a single speed. Granted, you have a powerful motor, so hills shouldn't be an issue. But hey, some people like their gears. I already discussed the rigid front fork and that tall riders just need to consider how they plan to ride this bike. And unfortunately, all of the accessories for the Rip Racer are add-ons, front basket, fender kit, and rear rack. Let me know if you'd like us to do an accessory video on the Rip Racer in the comment section below. Please do me a favor and check out the links in the description to help support the channel and let me know what other juice bikes you'd like to see us review. Thanks so much for your support and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.